Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. I apologize it has been so long since we've been working on the house or getting any videos out to you guys, but uh, it is my birthday month and uh, basically I went ahead and did a thing. So again, I apologize, it's been a while. Uh, I have just been working like crazy at my job. Uh, I'm up to about four days a week on like one week of the paycheck and like three days a week on another. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people who work five days a week, six days a week to hear someone say you only work like uh, three days a week. But when you're working three twelves, it basically turns into like a five day work week. And that's because I work night shifts. So to try and stay up anymore, I just can't do it. I, I can't stay up till 730 in the morning and then like work on the house. Uh, to like 12, 1, 2 in the afternoon or something. And then when I get home and I go to bed and I wake up, you know, it's 7, 8 o'clock at night. So that'd be like you guys getting up at like 7 or 8 in the morning and it's pitch black outside. So it's uh, not a lot to do on the outside of the house when it's so dark and uh, uh, it's starting to get cold at night again. So unfortunately, I just been, have been working a lot again and I'm just losing the motivation again like I have before uh, working on the house. I'm basically on the inside we're just still doing having to do tons of drywall mudding and taping and stuff and I just absolutely hate it I'm terrible at it so I just have zero motivation to basically work on the house I would rather just work three to four days a week start paying off our bills and uh, stuff that we have accumulated over the winter uh, credit cards and stuff like that and uh, that's just kind of where my time and my money like lies right now but since it is my birthday month and I am turning 40 this year if you guys are are familiar with the channel have been watching for a while you will know that uh, this past spring or so we sold our Kubota tractor and that is because we just don't use it a lot uh, the thing weighed almost 2,600 pounds the deck width was over like 70 inches if you uh, include like the chute that you can like put up or sit down it was just very hard to get it like in between all of the trees and stuff and not to mention at 2600 pounds it just destroys the yard it was just too heavy so i told you guys that i was gonna sell it and i did and i told you that if i sold it we were gonna have to do something for mowing the lawn and for this past like summer we've been using our john deere tractor or our john deere riding lawn mower that my mother gave us for free but it's kind of on its last leg it's got almost 500 hours on it it needs an engine overhaul. Uh, the deck has already been destroyed a couple times out on the property. We've ripped the wheels off. I've had to weld them back on. Uh, I tried to adjust it up even higher than what the natural ride height is, which is at a max of about four inches, but it still ended up hitting stuff. It hits roots and uh, roots and stuff out in the yard and it just gets banged up so bad. The battery needs replaced, the paint and everything's falling off and that poor deck is just so paper thin, it's just kind of on its last leg. So for my 40th birthday, I decided to go ahead and pick up exactly what I told you guys was and that was a zero turn riding lawnmower. So this video is just a little bit about what I bought and why I bought it. As you can see, it obviously is a company called Spartan. This is Sparta! I had no clue that I wanted Spartan. I researched a little bit. Obviously I've had Kubota before, so I kind of looked into Kubota. Kubota, there's also Toro and Cub Cadet and the Spartans and a few other in between. And I just tell you fair and simple, the reason why I went with Spartan is because of what I just said. The riding lawnmower, and in fact, this is our second riding lawnmower, has been so destroyed out on the property that I needed something big and heavy duty, and even the Kubota's mower deck got abused. I ripped a wheel off of that thing, and while I don't know off the top of my head how thick the mower deck was for the Kubota, it basically was just a stamped piece of steel and a part where it ended up kind of failing is if you bumped anything or hit anything in the front of the deck down in there, that stamped steel kind of went over 
down and like looped back up, well, that little bit of a loop would get like smashed in and uh, uh, I have had to, I don't, can't remember if I had to hit that out with a hammer or not, but it happens on the riding lawn mowers that you have to like smash them back out. A uh, $400 Cub Cadet riding lawn mower we got when we first bought this property. That thing was so abused and broken that the deck would end up getting smashed in, the blades would end up hitting it and cut through it. I had to smash it back out, but there was just no saving that thing. Uh, it eventually sent a rod out through the block and it burned to the ground. So uh, everything out here basically destroys machine work. So. The ultimate reason why I ended up going with Spartan is because this mower deck is the thickest in the industry. It's seven gauge steel. And then if you look even further up in here, you can see that the whole front of that has probably about a three eighths piece of steel all the way welded across that. So you're literally looking at like that thick of steel to hit something if you were to run into it as opposed to, again, the tractor that had nothing. It was just bent over steel decking, which it may have been seven gauge, I can't remember. It may have been a little bit thinner, but that's basically why I went with Spartan. They have the absolute thickest, most heavy duty deck in the industry, at least on match, maybe with a couple other companies. And the price point is just, it's on point. The Kubota riding lawnmowers in this size are so expensive, they're almost like double the price. You're looking at at least five or six thousand dollars more to just have the name brand Kubota. But the crazy thing is, is Kubota doesn't put their own engines in it. In fact, I think every uh, zero turn riding lawnmower out there, they pretty much either go with a Kawasaki or they go with like a Briggs and Stratton, etc. So you're not even buying a Kubota and really getting like a diesel powered Kubota engine. You're buying somebody else's engine anyway. And since the engine is the heart of the motor or the heart of the machine, uh, it didn't matter basically what company I went with because I could get whatever engine I wanted in the back. But again, that mower deck being so crazy thick, I think this thing's really gonna be able to stand up to our abuse out here. And uh, I just have to get used to actually using the thing. So I don't know a lot about uh, zero turns, but what I can say is the RZ models, these are kind of like your residentials. And I think the RTs are your commercials. This happens to be a RZ HD, and the HD is basically the heavy duty. This is basically the biggest uh, residential that you can get, and all of the components and stuff inside of the deck, they use the commercial um, stuff and components in there. So this guy is residential, but it's kind of beefed up the, to be more commercial. The only thing it doesn't have that I wish it had that the commercial does, uh, one of the things is back here on the rear frame on the commercial, they put like a two inch receiver hitch. And on this guy, it doesn't come with one, but there is a company out there that you can bolt on a two inch receiver hitch or can bolt on a flat place of steel that the riding lawn mowers have. And that you can use like tow behind little trailers that you like pull up a pin, you stick it over that plate steel, and then the pin goes down through all three components and like basically keeps it attached. So I either have to buy the plate steel with the hole or a receiver hitch. And basically then I can kind of like tow little things here on the property around with this guy. But again, it is residential, so it just basically is not as beefed up, but uh, I think I got a really good deal on it. So again, not only are these guys way cheaper than like Kubota, for example, but uh, there is a few deals going on right now. A lot of people right now have like uh, money off, et cetera, or 0% interest rate. That's actually how we got the Kubota tractor. It was 0% for like 84 months or something. But uh, this guy not only was offering $1,000 off and 0% interest rate, but if we paid cash, we even saved even more. So the 0% uh, interest rate's not really 0%. They are charging you more for the units. But uh, uh, we saved about $1,500 um, paying cash and going with this. I also was gonna maybe upgrade the seat and upgrade the front wheels here. So they had like suspension front wheels. But I told the guy, let's hold off. That saves me about another $1,000. Let me see how this guy performs with uh, basically being at 100% stock without any upgrades. And if it's too abusive out there, we just have to really start filling in those roots and uh, where the roots are sticking up out of the ground. And then maybe I won't need the suspension and I won't need that extra upgraded seat. But some quick features and stuff. I like that these guys uh, come up 
and they actually come off. The Quoboda did not have that. So of course you get sticks and leaves and everything else stuck up in there, which was a pain in the butt to uh, clean. The side protectors here on the Quoboda, they were at least like kind of, you just pinch up a lever and take this off. The, the most of the riding lawn mowers, they're actually just bolted down. These are nice that they have these massive, easy wing nuts that you just unscrew in one second. And then you can take off those protectors on the left and the right side. So again, you're cleaning out the mower deck way easier. I love that feature on uh, both of these. When I filled up with gas, it's nice to have a big old neck here so that you can't spill. Uh, probably a good two inches or more. I believe this guy held almost nine gallons. So that's a decent sized fuel tank. It is pretty quick. I think it only goes about nine miles an hour though. And again, because we didn't get any upgraded features, we do have a keypad over here that you have to punch in a lock code and then you can go ahead and start it. So basically nobody steals your machine. And of course you've got a choke and a throttle, a 12 volt outlet, and then to actually engage your PTO down here to engage the, uh, uh, the drive belt and it's got a soft startup. So on the Kubota, uh, I would have to throttle all the way down, engage the PTO to get everything to start to spin, and then I would increase the throttle. This guy has a soft start feature, so you can leave the throttle all the way up, engage the PTO, and it doesn't just instantly grab and start to go. It kind of winds it up at a slower pace so it doesn't damage the machine or anything. So that's a cool feature. Uh, the keypad over here tells you everything that's wrong, like there's some warning lights and stuff. So like if you're low on oil, the battery, you're not sitting in the seat, if you're not in neutral, your parking brake is on, and if the PTO has an issue. So that's a nice little keypad feature there, and it will tell you when the maintenance and stuff is due, so I like that. But the biggest thing that this guy has over anything else that we have uh, this goes all the way up to five inches. So unlike our tractor that only went up to about four and unlike the riding lawnmowers that only go up to about four, we won't damage this as much because we have an extra one inch of clearance that we won't hit anything and hopefully we won't be ripping any wheels off this time. And again, as I already had mentioned, uh, it has a Kawasaki engine, a uh, 691. Uh, the commercials start at like a 730, so they do have a little bit more CC in the engine, so the commercials are a little bit faster, but they possibly can burn more fuel. So this is, I think, to me, in my opinion, this is kind of like the best of both worlds. And your seat comes up pretty easy, so you can do some maintenance and stuff on the battery. I guess there's two drive belts or one drive belt back here for each motor. Kind of drive system that moves each wheel individually, hence why you have each one of these on each side. I personally have never owned or driven a zero turn today until today when I went out and actually was doing a little bit of cutting of the yard. It is not easy. Uh, that's probably my only thing that I don't like so far is these guys are very, very touchy. So for me to go into a straight line, it's impossible. Even if you're pushing both completely forward, it's impossible to do a straight line because every little bump that you hit, it wants to like go which way the bumps are going and uh, you end up just going down the yard making zigzags. So it looks absolutely terrible uh, because it did, again, the front wheels do kind of like follow the path of bumps and dips and everything. So. It's gonna take many, many uh, runs and many, many hours for me to get good at this thing to actually do uh, straight lines. If anyone out there, uh, let me know how long it took you to get uh, good at a zero turn uh, without making those lines if uh, they perform and ride kind of like the same way that I was mentioning. But yeah, that's about all there is to it. That is what I got for my birthday. Um, we will do some maintenance on it later. I think 20 hours is the first maintenance which is basically just an oil and filter drain. We're gonna have to get another trickle charger because now we're up to four batteries, two cars and two mowers that we're gonna have to get trickle chargers on because obviously they're not gonna be get, using, uh, get used during the winter. Uh, there are some extra plugs down in here that you can attach attachments to. So for example, we don't have any lights on this thing. We don't have an electronic up and down razor of the mower deck. Uh, you actually just have to push down on this pedal right here. That kind of brings the deck up about an inch and takes the tension off the height adjuster and you just have to spin that knob by hand. So it's not really that big of a deal to not have it electronically, but we can use those plugs for like other things. So maybe on these uh, romps here, we can attach some lights and stuff. If we do mow at night or at different times, uh, we'll be able to plug in and basically use that. 
And then again, I can report back to you guys how uh, it feels out on the property. If uh, it is warranted that we need a uh, more spring-loaded cushion seat, and uh, maybe if we need to upgrade these wheels and tires one day to again the uh, the suspension type. But if you guys have any upgrades for me, if you have any uh, tech tips, or if you guys got any uh, information on what you like about yours or mine that you can like uh, kind of put me towards, because again, I know absolutely nothing about these things. I'd like to know what you guys have and uh, what you guys have uh, found out that's good or bad, maybe if you have a Spartan, or about what you guys own. And again, any upgrades that you guys may recommend that I should get, let me know. But uh, happy birthday to me. Uh, this thing should come in handy out here on the property, and I can't wait to start using it some more. So until next time, take care, and I'll see you guys then.